All right, so one of the issues in customizing this bike that I've yet to resolve is this radiator cap. So the radiator is on the bike, it's right there, and then the cap from its stock position is right there. And you can see how this is very close to the frame over in here, right? It's right in this corner. And when I put on my new custom gas tank, this guy comes up. and it's sitting right on that radiator cap there. So I need to move that radiator cap over half an inch, something about it, maybe about an inch. I need to rotate that over basically. And so the simplest way I can think to do that is to get in here to the weld where this is soldered together because this is all brass, so that should be soldered in right here and heat this up so that I can rotate it and ro just rotate this whole thing over just a little bit and then re-solder this. ended up having to use the acetylene torch to actually heat this up because the other torch just wasn't getting hot enough to melt the solder. So we've got it and we've got it bent or moved, shifted over. It was so that it was so that this guy was pointed a little bit that way. Now we've got it pointed a little bit this way towards the inside. So hopefully this will work. I got to modify the shroud on the bike a little bit to fit this in here. All right, so I've got the tank to fit the way I want it to. It's got, it fits exactly in the spot it needs to be, and I can still make the tank work fitment wise. And then this guy works, it's got the cap on there, and it fits in there. It's off at a decent angle that way, a bit more than I would probably ideally like, but it will work. All right, so I've got the soldering done on this to reinforce this to make sure there are no leaks. There were leaks on here and I had to go back and fix them. You can also see from this angle at the stem how much of an angle it, it is off to that side now. Um, it was about the same angle off or maybe not quite as much of an angle off to that side originally. And so we went and twisted it, heated it up, twisted it and moved it over and then put some extra solder on there, make sure there's no leaks on that joint. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pressure test it. I'll show you how I do that in order to make sure there are no leaks on it. In order to pressure test it, I'm basically just gonna pump some air in there. And so I've got the radiator cap on there and that shutting off air coming out that way. I've also got this coolant overflow pipe here, and then I've got kinked off right there, so air can't go out that way. And we've got another radiator return or entrance point there with the hose connected, and so this guy, I got to plug that off with, I've got a piece of rubber over there, and I just hold my hand on that. And then on the bottom, another radiator exit point here, and I've got, this is where I'm putting the air in. I got a little air valve trigger there, that I have with a rubber tip on it that I've jammed in there with some additional rubber wrapped around it. And I'm just using some inner tube at this point right here. And that jams in there pretty good, seals off most of the air. We just got an extra piece of uh, hose here, some rubber, nice rubber hose that we've jammed over the top of this guy. And then I'm additionally wrapping a little bit of inner tube over the end of this guy. And that just, that's enough to seal off that entrance there and get some air into that radiator. So, no leaks, we are happy. So my other bit of news on this radiator cap is that for a GL 1100, 1982 at the very least, this radiator cap can be had for less than $5 at an auto parts store. That's how I got this one. If you look online specifically for Honda GL 1100 radiator caps, they're 25 to $30, but there's an extensive crossover apparently with the automotive industry on this particular radiator cap and so they can be had off of other vehicles very cheaply. I will put a link in the description below to cheaper ways of getting this guy and, and also a list of some of the vehicles that this radio cap is also used on. 
Thanks for watching this video, you guys, and thanks for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate having you guys along on this journey, on this build series. And believe it or not, we've got a few more videos to go before we can finish with this bike. We still got to do some wiring on this thing and running cables, figuring out cables and everything, the clutch cable and all that sort of stuff. And so there's a lot of fine tuning yet to do before I can actually ride this thing. So a few more videos and then hopefully, boom, boom, we'll be starting this thing up at least. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for coming along on this journey. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Keep on wrenching.